Michael in Valrico, Florida. See more better with freeprescriptionlenses.com. And today I'm going to cut your invisible bifocal with anti glare for your William Morris Black Label. This is a great collection of designers out of England. Great, great classic pieces. Of course, it comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together from overseas when they ship to me. And I will put the same thing on there when I ship to you. But this is the, where's my flashlight? Where it be at? This is the black label, BL043. It is in the 55 eye size in color three, which is also known as English tortoise, which is just a high contrast tortoise versus the dark tortoise that has the gold accent pieces. Classic William Morris logo, not only on the outside in metal, but on the inside of the temple tips as well. Any of you guys looking for a nice classic look, a very well-made British designer, this is the collection. I did not have this one on the website. He emailed me and asked if I could do it. And I said, I know you can. Well, I said, I, I know I can. I know you can be happy to wear it. Now, here's the other thing. I want to take back, stand back for a minute and say, Michael, I appreciate it. This is pair number 10 you have gotten for me in the last two years. I really do appreciate it. Keep going. With, with 12, you get an egg roll. So... Two more pair to go and you'll have an egg roll. But I'm going to pop out the original demo lenses, one of which says William Morris on there. I'm going to pop all those out. Put it into the tracing element of my blocker and hit start. A little stylus is going to pop up and it's going to go around and trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine, authentic William Morris frame, William Morris Black Label, even better yet, because they have the regular collection, and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number on there, so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase, whether they are prescription or not. Now, Michael, you know you need prescription because you got some crazy stigs. One of the, a little bit higher average astigmatism than normal, so, but hey, that's cool. That's what makes you, you. All right, so your pupillary distance for your right eye is 33. It was at 32.5. Don't believe me, it's over here. See, 32.5. Let's go back to the right. And I've raised it up by touching the plus button one time to 33. I'm going to raise the vertical OC height, the seg height up to 29. Keep tapping that button until we get to 29. That looks good. Now, I've taken the liberty of getting your lenses prepped. Essentially, what I do is I put them, every invisible bifocal has some laser marks. I put a dot on each one, use this Verilux layout chart to get everything lined up perfectly, cleaned your lenses off. The lenses come with yellow paint from the lab, but I don't like to put that on there. I always clean them beforehand because the chemical after you use, after wipe so hard to get the paint off, I'm always afraid to worry about rubbing too hard on the finish. So I take that off. I need two blocks, or as I like to call them, Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. So I need to use a double-sided adhesive sticker, of which I got two right here. The black side is the sticky side. I'm going to stick that onto the first block, place it onto the platform, do the same thing for the second block. Now on the back is a little silver button that is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice today. The first time it's going to attach itself to something magnetical there in the arm. So let's get that ready. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. Line up that magnet. And I'm going to change the layout chart. Instead of single vision lenses, these are the invisible bifocal. So it's going to give me a different graph to use. Hopefully you guys can see that little orange graph on there. I am going to, hang on, let me clean that. Let me move some stuff out of the way. These things, this is just the platform and it moves so I can work around it. What do I need to clean off here? Come on now, come on. Look at those markings. Get everything lined up nice. Nice like that. There's, that's going to sit directly in front of your pupil. These other two demarcations are the laser marks. I want to make sure the lens is large enough. It is. Let's look at my thumb. That's good. My index finger. Let's bring that back up there. And I'm going to hit that button. The arm's going to come down and place the block onto the right lens. I'm going to do the same thing now for the unright lens. Unright, just like me. It ain't right. Line the magnet up. 
Now your pupillary distance for your left eye is 32. It has mirrored your right from 33. I'm going to hit the tap the minus button a couple times. And we're going to go down there. That's a big thick dot right there, but that's okay. I can work with that. Put that there, the optical center. Those other two dots are placed there evenly. Tells me that it's on kilter with your prescription. Of course, it's critical with every prescription with yours. There's no margin of error. Make sure the lens is large enough. It is. Hit the button. The block's going to come down and place the... The arm's going to come down and place the block onto the left lens. Now, this is the edger. This is what costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out, buy their own, put it on your own kitchen counter there in Valrico, Florida. And you can cut your own lenses at home. You won't need this guy anymore to do it for you. This guy with the long sleeves. Let me roll my sleeves up so I can get to work here. It's still a little chilly today. And I was out there doing a house call. You know your optical when you write down PDs on, on your hand. But I was donating a pair of glasses to someone in need. And I had to do a house call to a, a rest home and take that measurement. Write it on there so I wouldn't forget. So, the actual, let's, let's wake up the computer. That is the shape that we will be cutting. That is your frame. Turn that around. Look at that. Look at that. So these are polycarbonate lenses. They were plastic, Kindex plastic, or Trivex. I would select that, or to be determined later, the secret mysterious lens material that our government is not telling us about now. So we'll stick with polycarbonate. I'm not going to polish the edge of your lens because it won't be seen. I'm only going to put a safety bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens. The actual cutting wheel is over here on the far left. It's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away your lens material until it's the final size. This wheel in the center with that channel, that little valley, that's what's going to put the V-shaped bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. I'm going to press that on there. That magnet is now going to do its job a second time. It's going to attach itself to something magnetical there in the chuck. Or as I like to call it, the Charles. Because I don't know this machine well enough to call it Chuck. Although, I am becoming rather intimate with this machine. <laughs> but uh, that's another story. That's another video. And somehow it got released on the internet. Don't believe what you hear. Okay, so, where am I at? Hit the green arrow, which is start in every language. The door closes, the clamp shuts. And then the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see as it's going around tracing the shape. And then the old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once is measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing. Now you see light flickering in the background that is water there to catch the optical sawdust. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry where plastic, high-index plastic, and Trivex lenses cut wet, meaning the water is sprayed onto the lens the entire time it's on the cutting wheel. However, water will spray onto the cutting wheel for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle just to wash away any optical debris that you may soon see beginning to form around the edge of the lenses. So your lenses are made out of polycarbonate, which is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. They are high impact resistant lenses and have both UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin, so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. Unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that you have to reapply every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun there in Valrico, Florida, this is permanent and never needs to be reapplied. Now you have the Crizol anti-glare coating don't believe me you can believe your cloth live life in the clear so anti-glare is three features in one the first feature is it reduces glare when driving at night particularly driving at night in the rain but from street lights stop lights computer screens overhead fluorescent lights and street lights stop lights fluorescent did i say that so if you notice your lens is still completely flat all the way around it's not gone onto the bevel wheel yet but the second feature is it's a reflection free lens so when someone's looking at you they're not looking at their reflection in your glasses they, it makes for much better eye contact they see just your eyes the other nice thing is if you take a selfie or if someone takes a picture of you with a flash you won't see the flash lit up in the lens it'll see just your eyes now I have a let me use this here's another lens that does not have the anti-glare coating on there and you can see how the lights reflect off of there so see how it makes for much better eye contact now the third feature that I like, which is the practical side, 
is it comes with the industry's hardest scratch coating because the Cruzol equipment that is the size of a, well, it's a pretty large equipment, but it costs well over a million dollars and takes over 24 hours to vaporize eight different coatings onto the lens. So because of the time and the expense, they put the industry's hardest scratch coating on the lens to protect your time and investment. So now the lens has moved to the bevel wheel. It's getting that V-shaped bevel, so it fits inside the bevel of the frame. The knife-like edge, if you will, it's no longer flat. Still, a very dull knife like me, but knife-like edge nonetheless. Your lens will be so sharp, if you were to take it out of your frame, that you might be able to cut through a piece of wet tissue, providing you soak that tissue in a bucket of water overnight, you just might be able to cut through it. So water has begun spraying onto the lens to wash off any schwarf. I believe that is spelled S-C-H-W-A-R-F. When I first heard that word in school, I raised my hand. I wanted to call BS. They were making something up and then made me open my textbooks. Damn it, I hate it when they make me read. But I opened up my textbooks, sure enough, there was the word in there. I was telling on myself for not reading that that week when I was in school. So a little lever has come out. At the end of that lever is a spinning wheel, something you would find on a Dremel tool. That's what's applying the safety bevel to the rear concave surface of the lens. Should any portion of the lens protrude from the back surface of the frame and come into contact with the cheek, it'll be nice and smooth. So now I will open the door with my mind. You like that? I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I can. It just takes me a couple hours, but I can do it. I just got to keep staring at it. Ooh, look. Schwarf. I love it when it comes off in one piece. Throw that in the trash. Use my thumbnail to get the rest of it. You know, if I knew I was going to be on TV, I would have cleaned my thumbnail a little better. So, let's see if it fits first time around. Tuck the lens in at the outside corner. Using my thumbs, press down the nose. No, it does not want to fit. It wants to fight me. He's fighting me. He's fighting me. So I'm going to take it down. Let's do about 0.15. A fifteenth of a millimeter and hit retouch. The right lens takes the longest once it's the correct size. I flip it over and cut the left, but with your prescription, you're higher than average astigmatism, of which you have four and a quarter steps in the right, five whole diopters in the left. You are special, Michael. Of course, I didn't need to tell you that. You already knew that. But I don't come across those prescriptions very often. If I ever saw that prescription on a piece of paper, I knew it would have to be you. But you would tremendously benefit from the anti-glare coating because driving at night, you have two curves on your eyes. One curve this way, which isn't that much, and a very, very steep one, this one. And because of that, the way that this is the back of your retina with your pupil facing this way, when light comes in, it goes through the iris, but then it opens back up again and scatters all along the back of your retina. And that's what gives you a terrible halo effect or when you look at a candle or a street light and see spikes sticking out in all directions that is because it's not coming to a point focus on your actually this is a good example you see the flashlight it's supposed to focus at a point focus on the back of your retina in one small point instead it's scattering very largely largely hugely it's going to be hugely on the back of your retina when really it needs to be one point focus so that brings that in it helps focus everything so let's dry everything off run my thumbnail around let's make sure it fits this time tuck it in at the outside corner and you're still fighting me let's do another 0.15 we're going to end up at 0 0.30 minus 30 so I'm sorry you guys are having to watch a little bit longer than normal but I shouldn't apologize for taking the utmost care I cut every pair of lenses that get shipped worldwide and you want someone like me who's going to give you the best possible cut. If I were to force the lens in there it would cause your frame to stretch or roll. A lot of people will use heat to make your plastic pliable before inserting the lens but again once that cools off it's going to distort your frame, stretch the frame out possibly cause it to crack or break later on anyone who's ever had a lens break going I mean a frame break going around that is why the lens was cut too large that and you stepped on it a combination of the two maybe m -m -m maybe
Go get this finished so I can take my wife out to dinner. I am in the doghouse. I got in a lot of trouble. My wife caught me making out with her twin. Now I said, honey, in my defense, I thought it was you. And she replied back that she looks nothing like her brother. And you know, I, I couldn't argue, so. Ba bum bum ting. So remember, I'll be here all week. Remember to tip your waitresses and drive home safely. If you like me, tell your friends. If your friends like me, then you better get new friends. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't quit my day job to do stand-up comedy. So, we tuck it into the outside corner. Have I mentioned that before? Oop, there's a little schwarf on the front. Clean that off. Clean, clean, clean. Now it snaps in there. Look, that's good because the block came off. Let me put the little sticker there. Dry that off on my palm. Best way to clean anything and dry it, put it on your hand. Flip that over to L. Take the old L. Press that on there snug. And hit start. Just like before, the door closes, the clamp shuts, and then the lens is going to be traced by the two white styluses again, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see as it's going around tracing the shape of the lens. And the old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once. It's measuring the thickness of the lens. Look at that. With your high amounts of astigmatism, no edge thickness. Look at that. Look at that. Four and a quarter. You have two diopters of spherical, then another four and a quarter. A total of six and a quarter. No edge thickness whatsoever in this larger than average frame. That's why I use polycarbonate. So, oh, here's a good teaching moment. Where's my pen? So, the dots came off. I have to put them back on there. Dot. You guys getting really weird special effects from looking at those dots in there? Yeah, I bet you are. So, so I've got the two dots on the laser marks. Flip that over. Put a dot right there. If you guys missed any of that, let me recap. <laughs> You're not getting away without that bad joke. So, and come down here to the lensometer. We're going to spin the axis wheel to 007. So that reminds me. Dun 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 Wait, I need some cufflinks. Dun 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 dun. Bond. James Bond. Okay. Put this in over that dot. Am I on seven? I am on seven. Check the power, and I am getting minus two. Exactly on two. That's because your prescription is minus two. Everything starts at zero. The unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter, spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R, starting at zero and going up from there. Zero also being Plano, P-L-A-N-O, but I abbreviate with that. And it goes up from there, a quarter, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, one, and so on. So you're on the eighth rung of a ladder. You have eight steps of spherical correction. You are nearsighted. Without your glasses on, everything is much too large. That's why there is a minus sign your lenses will minify down to the correct size. Now, once it's the correct size, we have to correct for your higher than average astigmatism. There is a stigma over the word astigmatism. It refers to a shape. It's like saying someone has straight hair, someone else has curly hair. That is it. It is not a disease. It is not an affliction. So, once we're at two, you have another four and a quarter. So, as I mentioned before, you have one curvature on your eye this way. You have another curvature much steeper. And it's how you line up those two curves to make everything nice and crisp on the back of the retina. So when the light comes in, that is my special power. I, I bend light for a living. I take, that large circle, I take that large circle and I bring it down to a point focus on the back of the retina. So light is not scattered. So let's check the second curve. And it's way up here in the top of the power. And we're at, you know, where am I at? Where am I at? I mean, I could just use my prism ring. Let me drop this down a little bit more. There we go. Hang on, hang on. Gracious, I gotta be able to read your prescription. So we're at minus two. There we go. And we're at six and a quarter. One tick mark past six. How did I get there? That's because we add two like signs together. Minus two and minus four and a quarter makes six and a quarter. Using today's terms, if someone had borrowed two dollars from you and then they borrowed another four dollars and twenty-five cents, they would owe you six and a quarter. That's where we're at. Six and a quarter in the red. Now, your left eye, 
you need no distance correction whatsoever but you need five steps the 25th rung of a ladder five steps of astigmatism I'm sorry 20 20 five times four is 20 um, of astigmatism correction now these two numbers are obscure numbers the real values are the first two numbers are real values to can be concerned with these could be anywhere from 0 to 180 the unique thing you're almost on the 180 meridian 0 90 180 you're at 7 here you're at 166 here so you're only 14 degrees away from this 180 where you're at 7 degrees away from this 180 so that's a very unique thing with your prescription let's come down here we're going to check the the unright lens the lens that should be referred to as L wipe that schwarf off why me why me it was your time okay so let's see if it'll fit this time tuck it in at the outside corner push down at the nose it snaps right in take this block off it is no longer needed dry off with the hand a little bit of that take this sticker add to my art oh that's, there's a flap there let me push this flap down we're gonna put it on the side there we are growing this monster so I come down here hey the black dot is still there spin the axis wheel to 166 put it in over that black dot read the power boy I'm turning that wheel a lot and I'm at zero no correction no power plano no power let's check your astigmatism correction if all goes well we'll end up at minus five look at that minus five in the red I couldn't have done that any better if I had done it myself so your pupillary distance is 33 for the right 32 for the left turn the card around and place the PD stick against my look I got one dirty spot on that thumb you got a lot to catch it up to do to catch up with that thumb so put it there and when I hold it up to your left lens we're getting 65 millimeters so that is cut perfectly I want to ch check I want to chalk check the optical center height and I'm getting 29 to the bottom of the lens there check on this one and actually I'm gonna put this behind if you can see that you don't want to go straight down with a curved lens anything in that aviator shape it's to the very bottom of the frame the deepest portion of the frame if you go straight down there's still a little bit deeper over here so I'm gonna measure at the deepest point and I'm getting 29 millimeters to the center of the middle of the frame the bottom of the frame not the bottom of the lens but where the lens goes into the bevel inside there so that is done well this is the portion of every video there's I clean your lenses I mentioned that you get free shipping anywhere in the US and Valrico Florida is still in the US but when you get these in the mail there is a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight however there is an 80 percent chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other that's because 80 percent of people have one ear that is higher than the other and because of that statistic 99 percent of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them so just stop by your local place and they can adjust the glasses for you now better yet i have learned from michael this week that his daughter is an opticianry school in tampa florida my brother lives in tampa did i ever mention that but her professor the head of the program Lori pierce i have tremendous respect for very intelligent very knowledgeable person i've seen her speak at continuing ed anytime she comes to my state i always like to watch or go and hear her lecture brilliant brilliant person nothing against the people who got me through school the head of the program and in my state who is recently deceased so I'm never gonna say anything bad about him although if anyone was to say anything bad about the, the person who taught me you'd have to stand at the bed the end of a very long line but I will say this the the head of my program yeah he quite a personality but but anytime I needed him in school he was there for me he was in the foxhole with me and that's the best thing you can say now on a on a beautiful blue sunny day the guy was cantankerous hard to work with but when the bullets were flying and you needed someone to watch your back he was there and that's the best thing you can say about anybody so having said that Michael's daughter has a great instructor caring nurturing loving she's gonna get through school great see if you can get her to adjust the glasses for you but I'm gonna and I'm gonna lose him as a patient once she graduates but hey that's life it's been a pleasure working with you I'm actually trying to get her to move up here to my state 
and manage uh, optical shop in the mountains a very good friend of mine has an incredible shop uh, just outside Asheville and I would love to m have her move up here get licensed in my state and, and manage that shop for me so where was I at oh yeah three point stance so the three points are one two and the bottom of the frame being three I set them down on the counter and press down there is no wobble when I say wobble I set them on the counter and press down and I'm part of that 80% mine wobble when on the counter but they sit level on me let me put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing yo and Lori don't critique what I just did I know you saw that you've had to pick up on it you got skills you got knowledge I'm just trying to earn a living here so I'm gonna flip that over press down there is no wobble close each temple so they overlap well actually look at that look at that there is a little bit of an overlap so I am going to adjust for that it looks good there so I do want to adjust this hinge ever so slightly and I'm actually need a tool to do that other than my thumbs but you know what I got skills there we go there we go now we're cooking with gas yeah that's it that is it same amount of tension on each screw of course I send out a selfie request Michael I don't know if you've ever sent me pair number 10 here I don't know if you ever sent me a selfie but I do include instructions not only how to care for your frame and lenses but for all your cleaning cloths the one that I provide your Crizal cloth your William Morris cloth that comes with uh, the frame now this frame sells for $259 and your lenses, the progressive lenses, the Essilor Ideal Advanced are $139.99. The Crizal Anti-Glare is $60. This is a great frame, classic aviator, great styling, double bars, it's known here. Um, it's very rigid. If anyone out there, this is another great William Morris frame. It's one of my best sellers. Anyone who's into black and platinum, which most men's watches, belt buckles, shoes, black and platinum, great shininess. Anyone who's got a little bit of gray hair, that black and silver works well and super lightweight frame. Look at the hinge design on here. There is no spring hinge, but the way that the metal is bent, it creates a springe, springe, a spring hinge. <laughs> you know, springe, that's what the kids are calling her now. Those wacky kids. I could have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those meddling kids. But this is the William Morris Black Label, the 109. Comes in a 49 eye size. This is color two. But if you want a lightweight, very stylish, this is the classic P3 shape. This is known as a keyhole bridge. See how this is more of a saddle that goes over a horse? This is known as keyhole because you can put a skeleton key in here. Great classic styling. Again, if there's any William Morris frames, the black label or otherwise, that you want that you don't see on the website, just contact me. I can get it for you. My wife, bless her heart, she's the one who updates my website. And no, she does not have everything up there yet. It's hard to yell at her um, because I love the deafness. Apart, and as I just told Michael this week, apart from going to opticianry school, marrying my wife was the smartest thing I ever did, the best thing I've ever done in my life. So that's it. If you like what you've watched, then subscribe to my channel or you can follow me on Facebook or Instagram as freeprescriptionlenses.com. You can follow me on Twitter at freerxlenses. If anyone has any questions, you can either email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com or simply click the contact me button on the website or better yet, as of recently. How about that? How about your lenses minifying there? You see the print on the screen? What does that look like? Ooh, that's got to be some really weird effects. Um, but yeah, just leave a question or a comment in the comment section below. That way other people can learn from your inquisitive nature. And Michael in Valrico, Florida, I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut the invisible bifocal with Crizal Anti-Glare for your William Morris Black Label 043, the 55 eye size and color 3, which again is English tortoise, or also known as Japanese tortoise. And everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.